Gentlemen, welcome back to the T. Shanley, starting in business, building a brand vlog. This one, big number, big, big, big number, big bar, big number, 215. So, <laughs> as you can see, I'm a little amped up and excited. So first, it's lip balm. So, so here's the funniest thing. It has taken us like, like 18 years to come out with new products, right? And then all of a sudden, once we got, once we got them rolling, then it's like, yo, we just keep pumping them out. So first it was lip balm, and I would just like to say, for you guys out there that haven't, uh, that haven't tried the Tej Hanley lip, it is, my God, it is creamy, it is soft, your lips kissably smooth. So I just would like to actually read a comment that I got, a message from our friend John at the Cavalier sent me, wait for it, sent me a message yesterday, I get it out of nowhere. He says, uh, he says, it's great lip balm, lives up to the hype. Even impressed my wife, which is a high bar. And I said, thanks, Cavalier. It took like a zillion tries to get this right. But anyway, we got it right, we nailed it, and that was a big plug from him because as you guys know, he doesn't mess around or bullshit. Fact. Today, the star of the show, Wash Body Bar. Oh, it's smooth. It is delightful. It's also not overpowering. So I have a bar of this at home. I took it home last night. I'm like, I cannot wait to try this. As you know from last vlog, the holiday party, I was pissed at Kelly because he forgot to bring me this. Anyway, they sent it to me, and I got to tell you, <laughs> it was the weirdest thing. So I'm using this bar. I first let my wife, so I'm like, what do you think about this? She's like, that's nice. That's real nice. So a few things you need to know about this bar. I'm actually going to open one as I speak. Um, the craziest thing is how freaking clean you are going to get when you use this bar. Here is the bar. Can you see Tiege kind of stamped in there? After one wash, that goes away. <laughs> um, so the scent, oh, it smells similar to our, our scrub. For you guys out there that like the scrub, you're going to freaking love this daily wash bar. So here's the deal. I used it last night. And the thing that you're gonna love about it is that it's a mild exfoliant, right? It's just super soft. And when you use it, it doesn't foam up and get like super lathery. There is lather though, there are bubbles. But when it washes off, it washes off so clean, your skin almost like squeaks. <laughs> it is the weirdest thing. For you guys that try it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You use it, your skin is soft, and it just, it feels so freaking clean without drying you out. I don't know how it does it, but this bar is, it is incredible. But like I said, it's very mild. The fragrance isn't overpowering. It also doesn't hang out on your skin. And so I think you guys are absolutely going to love this. It exfoliates, it feels amazing. It just, it's an incredible, incredible soap. And uh, for you guys out there that want to try it, the good news is that if you are a member, you can now add it to your dashboard or add it to your order just like you can lip. So all these new products um, coming out, we've got some other ones. We've got an exfoliating bar that Dave was talking about last time that is almost ready. That thing is ridiculous. Like you use that twice a week and look out ladies, I'm talking like it is exfoliating. Um, deodorant, we got lots of cool products coming, but super excited about this. When I got it, the packaging just looked really great and, and sort of TG, as TG as you can wrap a bar of soap. Anyway, guys, that's it. Wanted to give you a little product update. This stuff, incredible. Lip balm for you guys out there that have tried it. Down in the comments, let everybody know what you think. And be honest. Like, don't just be like a hater and be like, yo, I, I tried it and it sucks if you really didn't try it. Like, I know there are some of you watching that do that kind of stuff, which is a little bit annoying, <laughs> to say the least. <sighs> it's good. It's so good. And that's the thing that is so exciting. It has taken us way too long to develop these products, but the products are like rock stars. And that's the thing. Each and every product that you get from Tiege Hanley, you know has been custom developed and designed. There's a crap ton of effort and tests and tweaks that goes into each and every product. But the reason we do that is because we've got such high standards. We can't like just knock it out of the park with like level one, level two, level three systems. We've got to make sure that each and every product lives up to the hype and the standards that we have come to realize and you have come to expect from T. Shanley. And this bad boy, I'm telling you, ridiculous. This 
Ridiculous. And this, ridiculous. All right, so that is a product Tish Hanley update. Um, like I said, guys, if you are a member, you can just log into your dashboard and add this or this to your next order. All right, so now let's talk about the one question I've been teasing you guys about for a few weeks, and that has to do with YouTube and taxes. I promised our friend Quis, Quis, <laughs> Quis Winter, Chris Winter, sorry, um, who is a fellow content creator. He says, warning tax question, because apparently I get in trouble anytime I talk about taxes. I also can't read too well without my glasses. He says, business question. Uh, Aaron, I run two YouTube channels totaling 4,000 and 450,000 subscribers. I'm looking to make roughly 20 to 30K a month next year, which is huge money that rolls out to be about three, four hundred thousand dollars a year, which is just ridiculous. That's a lot of money. Um, through AdSense and affiliate sponsorships and was wondering, how do you do your taxes in the best way to keep as much as possible? Not talking about T. Shanley, which I'm sure is separate, but uh, more your YouTube personal brand. You're set up as an S-corp and pay yourself a salary and dividends. Or are you a sole trader, sole proprietor? Um, I also have nearly no expenses, which is difficult to, to deduct. Not many accountants know much about uh, this business type. Hope you can help some of us in a similar YouTube situation. P.S. Cheers for answering this question. I don't know if you understand just how valuable this channel is, but we all do. I do understand how damn valuable this this channel is because I wish there was this channel when I was starting a business in order to help myself avoid some of the speed bumps. So, all right, so just warning, this could be a weird answer and all over the place. All right, so YouTube and taxes. So just to give you guys an insight or a little bit of insight, when it comes to normal businesses, all right, if you have a business and you produce coffee, right, if you sell $20,000 worth of coffee in a month, typically you're gonna have like $10,000, $15,000 worth of expense in order to produce that amount of revenue. But with YouTube, the only thing you really have for most people is a video camera and your mouth, right? That is what you do. You come on and you create content, you talk, and then this is the generator of the revenue through AdSense and videos and and, and advertising and sponsorship and, and things of that nature. But to make that, say, twenty dollars or $30,000 a month, you really don't have a lot of expenses in order to generate it. Now, that's one of the amazing things about this platform is that pretty much anybody, it doesn't matter your skill set, it doesn't matter your experience, if you've got a voice, if you've got something or a message that you want to share and a video camera and an internet connection, you can make a lot of money eventually. Now, one thing I would like to say, one of the things that bothers me is when I see content creators that are just starting channels thinking, this is how I'm gonna get rich, or this is how I'm gonna make money. If you go into it with that attitude, that is not gonna happen. The majority, the vast majority of content creators are not making enough money to make a living. Because a lot of times when you're starting, you're making a few bucks, like that's it. Um, when I started, there was no such thing as making money on YouTube. It was just the thing that you did. And then over the years, you know, things have changed. And, and I have realized that there are opportunities um, in order to make a living off of doing and creating content that I love and that I'm passionate about. You got to go into this for the right reasons. Now, I'm not going to get all into that because that's not really what the question is. But if you keep working, if you keep putting out content, you get popular, people start watching and loving your voice and your audience, or and your audience sort of watches your videos, and maybe if you have e-products or whatever it is, they buy your products, you're gonna make some money, right? And this is amazing, right? Congratulations to you. Now all of a sudden, this little hobby is generating a little bit of income. Now, just to give you an example, You've got to have a lot of views, a lot of views per month in order to make any like real money. And when I say air quote real money, I'm talking about enough money for you to do it full time and live. Now, depending on your expenses, depending on where you live, this will obviously vary. And so I get in trouble when I say that kind of stuff, but I hope you understand. Now, just to give you another example, you need basically, for every thousand views you get on your YouTube channel, you're gonna make a few bucks, right? For me, it's, I think it's like $4 or $5 per thousand views. 
And so for every thousand views, I make five dollars. 10,000 views, now that's fifty dollars. You get a hundred thousand views, that's five hundred dollars. And so as you can see, you know, you really need a lot of views in order to make, you know, a livable wage. Anyway, beside the point, our friend is in a fortunate position, an amazing, like, amazing, mind-blowing experience where he could potentially make twenty to thirty thousand dollars a month. But once again, the expense that he has in order to generate that, that revenue is his time, his ability to film a video and upload it. There are really very limited costs associated with that. So first things first, you need to understand that I am not in any way, shape, or form giving any legal, any tax, any anything advice other than just telling you sort of my situation and some of the things that I have done. And, and this is such a complex topic. There's so much that goes into it it is really hard to sort of give you advice. Now, if we were sitting here face to face, I might be able to talk to you a little bit more in depth and detail about your specific situation and tell you a little bit more about mine. But what I'd like to do is just give you an overarching sort of, these are some things that, that I have done that I would recommend that you can possibly ask your accountant about. Um, first things first is set up a, a company or incorporate yourself. Basically, easy way to do that, Go to your secretary of state, um, depending on where you live, and set up an LLC or LLC. I personally set up LLCs for my companies, the majority of my companies that I own 100% of, even some of my companies that I have like kind of like shareholders in. Um, T. Shanley is set up a little bit different. That is a bigger, different animal. But, uh, but Alpha M, it is set up as an LLC. Pete and Pedro, LLC. I own both of those completely. And then Menfluential Media, I am a partner in that. I've got two additional partners, but that also is set up as an LLC. Now, for me, I don't feel like a sole proprietorship offers enough protection. And an LLC, a limited liability company, is the way that I go. Now, depending on whether or not you're taxed as an S-Corp or a C-Corp, really that's up to your accountant and sort of how you have things structured. But once again, you got to get a good accountant. Unfortunately, accountants don't necessarily have the most skill or experience in this type of business. One thing I would say is ask for a referral. If you have somebody in your life or that's around you that you trust that you might think, okay, well maybe this person has a little bit more in terms of income and it's not just like a salaried employee because if you are you know a teacher or you are a manager somewhere chances are your taxes are pretty cut and dry straightforward but if you know somebody who might have a business or have investments those are the people that you want to talk to in terms of getting a referral for an accountant now one thing you need to understand though is good accountants are going to cost a little bit more than just go into like an H&R block or something like that. Because with those type of situations, you basically just bring them, you know, your, your information, you give them your receipts or whatever, and, and they, you know, it, it's sort of like, it, it, it's just like one after another. It is not very creative. They are not trying to figure out and maximize your, um, you know, your situation. And so a good accountant is going to cost you a little bit more, but typically the whole like rule of thumb is they're going to save you a lot more than they cost if that makes sense. Now, personally, for me, I'll just talk about Alpha M and Pete and Pedro. I have an umbrella company that basically owns both of these entities. Both Pete and Pedro and Alpha M have their own expenses. They've got their own stuff going on. Both of them actually will pay me a salary. And so I've got a payroll company that once a month, I get a, a paycheck deposited into my account and um, from both companies. The other cool things about that is taxes are withheld for the money that I'm, I'm making in a salary from these two individual companies. Um, something else you might want to look into, once you sort of start getting comfortable with the amount of money that you're making as a, a sole proprietor or as an LLC, single member LLC, there are a few things you can do. Now, the one thing I will say is every single one of you that is doing this, you need to start saving, right? Because you never know when the faucet is going to be turned off. You never know when it's going to go away. And so don't spend all of the money that you're making and think, oh, this is all mine. Because 
you know, the truth is, is that once you get into that tax bracket, like almost 50% of the revenue that you're gen generating on an annual basis goes right to, right to taxes. You've got to pay federal. You've also got to pay your state taxes. Depending on where you live, like Chicago, crazy expensive. And so Chicago taxes are, are even worse than, more, worse than Atlanta. Um, anyway, so you got to make sure that you are not overspending or spending but, but above your means. Something else you need to think about and consider is saving some of the money and putting some of the money and revenue that you're generating directly into a retirement account every single month. Um, this is something that is going to be a tax deduction for your business, and then you're going to be saving for your future, which I personally feel is incredibly important and a lot of people don't do. Roth IRAs, 401ks, things of that nature. Once again, this is where your accountant is going to have to chime in and help. Um, something that I learned the hard way was there's something called a defined benefits plan where um, you actually, your company can set up a, almost like a retirement, like a pension plan for you. You put in, long story short, you're able to put in more money throughout the year than a typical 401k or a Roth IRA. Um, and then the other thing you can do, I mean, God, there's so much. <laughs> there's so much that goes into this that I'm doing a really crappy job explaining it and probably not saying what you need me to say. Some other things that you can write off, like if you're going out to lunch or dinner and you're going to be talking about business, you can write off your meals, but not all of it, like 50% of your meal. There are also, you know, rules and regulations about how much you can actually write off and all that. Once again, it boils down to your accountant. Um, cars, automobiles, like I have, one of my cars is is a company car. If you've got, I lease it through my company, and so I get to deduct um, the, the auto lease. I also get to deduct the insurance and things of that nature. As long as you have like an ulterior like mode of transportation, like you can write off your, your auto lease if you decided to do that. Um, some other things is like clothing. If you've got a wardrobe that you wear for videos, you can write off a lot of times you know, your, your, your wardrobe or have like a deduction for a wardrobe. Now, you can't write off like all of it, I don't believe. Um, you also, if you're wearing it like outside of you filming video, like you can only deduct like a percentage of it. But all of the things that it takes for you to create the content and be the personality on your videos and do what you do, you get to deduct that. In a nutshell, you can deduct things that you require in order to make your videos. I don't write off a home studio, I don't write off a home office, but if you are somebody that, that does work in your home and you have a studio and you've got maybe like a room designated for that specific, you know, that, that content creation piece of the puzzle, you can write off like a percentage, depending on your square footage of your home or your apartment. You can also write off like a percentage of your utilities. But once again, now we're getting into kind of a little bit more of a gray area. The best advice, get a good accountant. I don't know if this video helped. I don't know if it hurt. Once again, nothing I say is, is to be, you know, taken as legal advice or, or accounting advice or tax advice. I'm just telling you some, some things from my perspective and point of view. There's a lot more that I, that I would share, but I just feel like it's, uh, it's best that I don't get into the weeds and you figure things out for yourself because you know my situation is going to be different than yours, but the fact that you are able to generate that kind of revenue from this, congratulations, you have, you've done something, something special. I wish my answer was better. I'm sorry. I, I, just don't, I just don't want to give you any advice that is not right or that is going to get you into trouble. You really just need to Got find an accountant and hopefully this helped a little <laughs> if you ever actually if you come to the men Flential conference we can talk more about this in person guys if you haven't got your tickets now we're like two months away ridiculous i'll link to it down below um there were a few other business questions on the last blog two amazing ones one from muhammad ali about how important trademarks are and patents Ask it next week. In this vlog down below, ask your question again. Also, another one that I love that really is important is from Bryce Rogers. Bryce, your question about your business partners and enthusiasm, that is also just an amazing question. Please, down in the comments, start it with business question. Ask your question again. Next week, we'll get into it. I'm actually gonna be filming next week's vlog from a lake house. Uh, my wife and I are going to meet a few friends and have a few uh, days and, and our New Year's actually at a lake house.
or something like that. <laughs> I'm not really excited, but <laughs> I'm going to go. I'll fill you in more next week. Anyway, guys, we love you more than our double monk strap shoes. Down in the comments, ask it. Start it with business question. I already told you this. Also, this amazing, this incredible. Is that everything? That is everything. Guys, I'm all over the place. I'm sweating my ass off. I apologize. I think that question got me nervous. Also, it's like 800 degrees in my office. Today in Atlanta, it's like 70. Ridiculous. Guys, speaking of ridiculous, you are amazing. And at T. Shanley, we always love you more than our ridiculously stylish double monks. Just because I'm curious. 83.